Welcome to the Game Dev Workbench, where we break down a feature or function from a benchmark video game and show you how to duplicate it using the Unity 3D Engine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the ultimate meter from Blizzard's Overwatch. Now, while I'm not an Overwatch player myself, I got exposed to it by watching my friends play it. And what attracted me to it is just a ridiculous amount of design and polish that went into the user interface. And that made me want to study it and break it down for you. So let's break it down. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with the ultimate meter, let's go through its functions or its gameplay flow. It starts at 0% and if you do damage, the meter starts to increase. Now once it reaches 100, your ultimate ability is triggered. The ultimate ability goes beyond the scope of this video, so we won't be covering it. Now let's take a look at the form, or the meter's graphic components. You have the background sprite, which is the dial when it is unfilled, and you have the overlay, which is what you see when the dial starts to fill up, and the counter which is dynamic text that follows the progression of the meter. Now here we are in Unity, and in order to recreate the ultimate meter, uh, we're going to need a UI canvas. So I've gone ahead and created one. If you don't yet know how to use the UI canvas, you're going to want to look at the official Unity videos. Now inside the UI canvas, I've created the assets that we're going to be requiring. So here we are, we have the radial meter, the first thing is the background sprite. And this sprite is colored white, and the alpha has been set to about 100. This is so you can see what's happening behind the meter while the game is playing. Next, we have the overlay sprite. So here you see it's partially filled. That's what this number is over here. You can see it fill as I drag this slider here. When you have this type of image script, there are several options available for you for filling. This being a radial meter, I've set it to radial 360. Here's what it would look like if it was set to horizontal. So that's for horizontal uh, gauge. We're doing the radial one. We set it to radial. We also wanted to set it to start from the top. And finally, we want the color to be closer to what we see in Overwatch. So I've gone ahead and created this hot yellow. We're going to set the zero because that's where it starts at. We also need some static text. In this case, the percentage symbol. And finally, we'll need the dynamic text. So it starts at zero. And when we impact the game, when our input's affected, it'll slowly rise. You'll also notice in Overwatch that there's this inner radial uh, meter. In fact, that one has no gameplay value. It just serves to draw the user's eye to the center. So with that said, for our purposes, it's redundant. We can leave it off. Now that we have the graphic component set up, let's create the interactivity. If you have the Action Director plugin for Unity 3D, this is going to be a cinch. Otherwise, you're going to need to create your own custom scripts. To begin with, we're going to need an empty game object and we're going to slide it right into the radial meter. And I'm going to call it Actions Radial Meter. Now, it's a simple matter of creating the right Action Director component. Get into your menu, select Action Director, and then the container. 
this is what holds the action that will impact the meter. So we're going to need UI action. We want bar number by, and this action affects the radial meter itself. Duration, how much time it takes for the meter to move every time there's an input. I'm going to set it to about two-thirds of a second so you can see what's happening. We can set an ease. A none means that the movement will be linear. Otherwise, the movement will have just a little bit more flavor. And what we can do is we can say we want it to ease out, which means that it'll start quickly and slow down once it end, reaches the end of its movement. The start value is zero, so we can leave it as such. The add value, we actually won't put any value here. And that's because we'll have another action that will determine how much we add every time there's an input. The range, the minimum is zero and the maximum is 100. And finally, we need to assign an asset to it, which of course is the radial meter overlay. So we drag that in. The second part to this, we're going to need to affect the dynamic text. So we find label number by and add that. We want it to happen in the same amount of time and we can set the same kind of ease to it as well, ease out. We need to assign the label that is the asset that gets affected. In this case, the dynamic text. Label number by gets slid in there. Start value, just like the meter, starts at zero. Add value, once again, we'll leave it blank because we'll have a third action called ink number by. And the reason this is is because it'll allow us to affect both of these with a single figure. So we want to affect the bar number by. Let's go ahead and drag it down into the field. And label number by as well. We'll go ahead and drag it down into the field. So now this action ink number by, when it is triggered, it will affect both action label number by and action bar number by. And when we make an input, we're going to affect the meter by 25%. So add 25 points to it. Finally, the action container can be set to trigger the actions held within in a sequence, so one after another, or in parallel by selecting fork. And this is what we want to happen. In this fashion, it'll trigger all three of these events at the same time. But it will take the value of 25, and it will take the animation values that are set here. Having action ink number by govern the other two actions means that if you want to iterate, or when you want to iterate rather, you only have one field to change as opposed to having to change two. Now that the actions for the actual meter are set up, let's link it up to a game event. So I've created a scene. It's a kind of a space scene, you'll see. And in it are some spaceships. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and assign that action to one of those spaceships. So in this case, this is ship number four. And nested inside that ship, when we tap it, there's another canvas. 
and in this canvas are two buttons grant and deny now inside deny I have another set of actions that are right here so another container with a whole lot of actions and what I'm going to do is drag in the action that we just created and place it in this stack if you will so that when I hit deny we'll see our radial meter get affected. Let's go back and turn these off and they'll appear when I tap the ship. Alright, we're ready to launch the game. Now it's important to note that all the events that you see here are governed by Action Director. With this plugin you'll be able to get similar results. So I'll just go ahead and tap these are the ships, grant them, just so you can see what it looks like. And now for our fourth ship, deny it. And as we can see, the radial gauge was impacted, it went up 25% and the dynamic text was also affected and went up 25 percent. So that's how you too can create the ultimate meter using the Unity 3D Engine and the Action Director extension. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to see more game feature breakdowns, subscribe to this channel and let us know what games you'd like broken down.